In this video I'm going to show how to download a shapefile, extract it, and then view it in QGIS. Now you might have done parts of this before, uh, but this is just going to show the whole process and hopefully it will be useful for you. Uh, I've got QGIS 3.4 open here on the screen. Uh, if your edition is newer it might look just slightly different, but hopefully you can still follow along. And the place where we're going to get a shapefile is the Natural Earth Data site. They have a lot of good data sets uh, for looking around um, at, the, at the world, uh, administrative boundaries, oceans, and things like that. So uh, we're going to go to naturalearthdata.com. And then there's a big green button that says get the data. Uh, this is, data is freely available. We don't have to pay for it. This is made by a nonprofit group. Um, and you know sometimes it can be hard to find data sets at, at the world scale because there's not one single government managing it. Um, a lot of times we do have to go to NGOs, uh, non-governmental organizations, nonprofit organizations to find those things uh, that have collected it on that scale. So um, there's different scales at which you can download the data. Uh, the 1 to 110 million is for very zoomed out mapping. It's not as detailed. Uh, 1 to 10 million that's way more detailed. Um, let's just go get this so I can show you what it looks like. We're going to zoom in a little bit and map one country. So uh, we'll go click cultural here and let's go down. Uh, we can take a look at some of the data that's available. There's countries, data, boundary lines, and so on, disputed areas even. Uh, we're going to get states and provinces. So just click this button to download that. Notice it's going to be about 13 megabytes. Now depending on your browser, what you see might be different here, but in Google Chrome you'll have this little bar pop up typically and when it's done I'm going to choose to show it in the folder where it is it's going to be my downloads folder and you can copy that to wherever you want to put it I'm going to put it in a folder uh, that I made before called C demo and just paste it there uh, so you can put it in your data folder or wherever you want um, and now to extract it in Windows you're going to right click and say extract all um, and then that will take the files out. Now notice here in Windows Explorer uh, you could double click this and you can see all the files but you cannot use them until they're extracted so this is somewhat of a deceptive view. Also if you're wondering how do you get this window open that you're showing uh, in Windows uh, if you don't see this or you lost it in Google Chrome uh, first go look in your um, uh, sorry first press the Windows key and E at the same time Windows E that will open Windows Explorer uh, if you lost the file somewhere in Chrome, you don't know where it is, you probably put it in your downloads folder, so you can go look there. And then I went and I put this into C uh, demo. And uh, when you're ready to extract it, you highlight it like this, so just by clicking on it, right click and say extract all. It will ask you where you want to put it. Uh, sometimes if I wanted to just have it straight inside the demo folder, I might delete this last one and you can see that it took all the files out and put them right here immediately into the demo folder once it does that I don't need this zip archive anymore I could delete it and what I really want is this stuff now remember this is a shapefile and shapefiles have multiple files that work together all with the same root name but different file extensions so I've got to keep all these here I can't delete everything except the shapefile uh, I've got to keep everything else but I can delete that old zipped folder once I've extracted the stuff um, so now that I've got this, I could open it in QGIS. So let's go there. And remember, we've got this uh, kind of data source manager thing uh, that we can open up. And we choose vector. Make sure that file is selected here. Uh, clear out anything if you've uh, been looking at it previously. And click the dot, dot, dot. And you can ignore what I just showed there. That's from a previous demo. I put this into the demo folder. So I'm going to browse to that. And I'll highlight this shapefile. NE10M admin1 states provinces. Uh, this is the data set I want. And so when I click add, uh, I should see it appearing like this. And then I can close this uh, data source manager. Now, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the coordinate system of this and, and why it displays in the way that it does. Notice that it's kind of horizontally stretched out. This isn't the nicest looking projection. Uh, I've mentioned that this is called the Placare or, or equirectangular projection. Um, if we go to this layer and right click and look at the properties, um, it's stored in its coordinate reference system right now is WGS84 Geographic. 
That means that each coordinate in the file is stored with latitude and longitude. It's, remember, that's in the 3D uh, ellipsoid space. Um, and so it has to be projected onto the screen. And so by default, the software sees that it's in geographic coordinates, and it just projects it into its, its default projection, which is that equirectangular. Um, so it looks stretched out like this. Um, also, the project itself, the, the map for the QGIS project, gets put into the same projection as whatever uh, the first data set we added, whatever that was. Um, so if I go to project and look at the properties and look at the CRS, I'm also going to see uh, that it's WGS84 right now. Now what I want to do is choose something that's appropriate for mapping um, my area of interest. In, in this case, I'm going to look at Argentina, which is in South America. Um, so down here, I want to choose a coordinate system that's appropriate for South America. So uh, the way that I could do that, uh, I could browse through all these coordinate systems down here. That's a lot. I don't want to browse to geographic coordinate systems. Um, those are, again, just going to be any one I pick is going to result in it using this um, uh, equirectangular projection because that's what the software uses to draw whenever you just choose geographic coordinates. Uh, instead, I want to choose something under projected coordinate systems. That's, that's going to result in my map being displayed as an actual map projection. Um, so uh, if I want to choose one for South America, I could filter it like this. Uh, South underscore America. And uh, you'll see some different ones popping up. I've got Albers equal area conic or equidistant conic. Um, let's choose South America Albers equal area conic and apply that. Sometimes these projections look a little wacky when you're zoomed out to the world uh, because they're just designed for uh, mapping a kind of a localized area. So if I zoom into Argentina, this is not going to be a problem that it shows all that wacky stuff on the outside. Uh, actually, this looks quite nice. And, uh, you know, I can zoom in here and I could change the symbol uh, to my liking and then uh, go ahead with my map from this point on. Uh, from this point onward, any other data set that I add into this map, any other vector data set or whatever, is going to be projected in real time or on the fly to match this uh, conic projection that I just selected. So whatever you pick up in the project properties, uh, anything else that you add is going to be um, projected on the fly to match it, which is nice. It helps ensure that your data sets line up, and most of the time it works. If you have strange situations where you're adding data sets from uh, some kinds of other datums. You might need to do additional work to, to match it up, but in most cases, uh, with the, the majority of the data sets that you'll find or create, um, it should line up just fine.